Ağudu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi nahmaduhu ve nesta'inuhu ve nestağfiruhu ve nu'minu bihi ve netevekkalu aleyh ve na'udu billahi min şururi anfusina ve min seyyiyati a'malina. Men yehdi la fela mudilla la ve men yudlil fela hadiya la. Ve neşhedü en la ilahe illallah. وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم <coughs> Welcome to everyone thank you for joining our discussion uh sit now i'm going to do a brief few verses from the quran uh verses that i think are very touching to me you know the quran is like a like a well it's like a well of pure water the words of allah you don't go to the well thinking you want to drink the well up you don't go to the well with the intention i'm going to finish the well you can't you can never do that what you do is you come to the well you satisfy yourself with your thirst and you walk away stronger and healthier and uh if you imagine that well as the best minerals and vitamins in that water you know to the health people here uh, it has added vitamin d and vitamin c <laughs> and when you walk away you just feel strengthened and rejuvenated that is the quran nobody should go to the quran and say look uh, let me finish uh, let me finish the quran then i'm going to be a learned man no 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 the quran is a book of allah it is not a book of men it will resonate at certain times of your life in different ways to you you don't always experience the same verse of the quran in the same way you know when i was uh, <clears throat> when i experienced tough times in my life when i was you know sitting in a jail cell and uh I was alone and I wasn't sure of what would happen to me the next morning and that night because I had my friends been screaming pulled out in the middle of the night and being beaten up and kicked around and I was always unsure of what will happen next to me and I uh, was at a, at a at a Quran a small Quran with me and I would read the words of Allah and some of the words would just have a different meaning in that context um and it would give me comfort then at other occasions again maybe you know facing family the challenges of family uh making you know providing for your family and your children you read that same verse and it might have a different touch in a different way and so the book of allah is a book is a well that never runs dry and it's a well that always satisfies your needs and that is how we look to the quran we attach ourselves the gift of the creator to his create to, to his creation to his human creation and so i want to share with you again a few verses tonight i want to read with you a few verses i'm going to put this the, the ayats on the screen and all i want to do is just you know we're not here we are to replenish ourselves we are to get a bit of a boost that's what we are that's why you are here and that's why i'm here we want to get a, a booster shot you know a vaccine shot we want to be vaccinated against shaitan and the quran is the vaccine and if you listen to the words of allah your heart becomes firm and your mind becomes clear and so that is what we'll do inshallah so let me put the screen on what we'll do is uh after the verses i want to raise a few other topics you know maybe a little bit controversial but i don't want to also go crazy but uh there are i you know somebody or some people did tell me look let's uh let's address a few contentious issues and we are mature we can deal with it we not titus we not trouble makers we are we love each other we have allah sick we not here to accumulate 
fame and name. I'm 57. I'm already past the point. I know it's not going to happen. Whatever Allah's plan for me, I'm I'm happy with it. Alhamdulillah. My 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 dream is to have Allah's satisfaction. My, at 57, my dream is Allah must be happy with me. Whether I'm nobody, whether I'm somebody small, whether I'm, you know, that's materially also. So let's de deal with some topics that are a little bit maybe. We need to deal with stuff. That's the way you learn is by interrogating things. And uh, there's one, one topic that came up. So we'll, we'll hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about it. Let me take you to the to the Quran and uh, I'll share my screen here. Let's share the screen. You know, the, the, the verse I want to share with you is a verse, is chapter three, the, the third surah of the Holy Quran. And uh, what is it, Surah al -Nahl? Let me just quickly make sure what is that the third, the third surah of the Quran called. Um, because the numbers are actually more important than the names. In, in the Quran, the names of the surahs are purely convenience. Right? It's not like Allah chose these names. Those are names. It's Ali Imran. So we're going to look at the first few 10 verses of Ali Imran. Very powerful, touching verses. And, uh, you, can, you, can, you can either just follow it on your phone or on your TV screen or you can just Listen, I will recite it so the, for a barakah, you know. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-wajim, bismillahi r-rahman r-rahim. In the name of Allah, the kind control of all fortunes. You can see my translation there of bismillahi r-rahman r-rahim. I have explained to you. Alif lam mim. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayu qayyum. Famous words, so also in Surah Al Kursi. Allah, no God is there except He in eternal existence. Nazala alayka al kitab bil haqqi musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi wa anzala al tawrat wal wal injil. That He revealed to you the code is real. A confirmation of what went before you. He also revealed the Torah and the Gospel. Min qablu hudan linna siwa anzal al furqana inna alladhina kafaru bi ayatillah lahum azabun shadid wallahu azizun dhul intiqam dhu intiqam he also revealed the gospel and the Torah earlier as a source of guidance to humanity. Then he revealed the criterion for Khan. Indeed, those who reject the right directions offered by Allah will experience a severe penalty. For Allah is mighty and can effect recompense. <clears throat> In Allah, la yakhfa alayhi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis sama. Indeed, to Allah, nothing is hidden, neither on earth nor in heaven. Huwa alladhi yusawwirukum fil arhami kayfa yasha. La ilaha illa huwa al-azizul hakim. He is the one that shapes you as he wills in the wombs. No God is there except he, mighty and all wise. Allahu Akbar. Huwa alladhi anzala alayka al-kitaba minhu ayatun muhkamatun hunna ummul kitab. Allah 
والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر ما يذكر إلا أول الألباب This is a very 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 deep and powerful verse here This verse is very very profound If I just read the English first, I'll expand the, just on one or two terms a bit more. It says in English, He is the one that revealed the book to you. In it are passages with literal meaning. These form the basis of the law. Others again have figurative meaning. It is those with crooked minds who take the figurative passages literally seeking to create discord claiming they can explain its meaning no one knows their meaning except allah instead those endowed with knowledge say quote we affirm the truthfulness of the entirety as from our lord and sustainer Higher consciousness is not attainable except by possessors of intellect. Oh, oh you know what? That's, that's a mouthful. There's a lot to reflect on here. There's a lot to reflect on here. Half of the Muslim world's problems can be solved if you look at this verse. You know, this verse is saying that the Quran has two types of verses. The one is literal. It says here, Muhkamat, Ayat Muhkamat, Hunna Umul Kitab, Wa Ukhar Mutashabihan. Two types of verses. The one is literal. It means the meaning is obvious and others are figurative, which means, which means the verse is not stating the obvious. It is using metaphor. Metaphor is, it is using symbolism, you know, If you say to somebody, I'm dying for a piece of McDonald's, whatever, pie. It doesn't mean you're dying. It means you crave it so strongly, you know. But now, <laughs> if, you, if the person interprets those words literally, it's going to not make sense of what you just said. The Quran is saying, because that is the way human language works. Human language consists of literally, of metaphors of every day we use metaphors and so the quran has to use the language of human beings and then the metaphors gets get absorbed get incorporated into the quran so the way that we should look at it is that the verse has literal meaning those are the laws the basic rules when it has figurative meaning you need to be humble about the understanding. You cannot claim that I know the figurative meaning. No, Allah says Allah alone knows the figurative meaning. So what we can do is we can, we can, we can speculate. We can say, maybe this is what Allah means. When Allah, I'm, I'll make you an example. Allah says, wherever you look, you will find the face of Allah. Wherever you look, you will find the face of Allah. There's a verse like that. Obviously, that's figurative because Allah doesn't, Allah, at many other places in the Quran, Allah says that no vision can be old. Him. So how can you say that Allah has a face if no vision can be old, Allah? So it is a figurative word to say the face. And in this case, we have to interpret the word face is The glory of Allah is wherever you look, you'll find the glory of Allah, the beauty of Allah, the light of Allah. So in other words, you have to look at the words figuratively. Now you get people like ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Taliban. I'm not saying they're evil, all evil. May you get good maybe also, but I'm not in agreement. So um, they make the mistake and maybe even some Shias, you know, there's, this, there's a school of thought in the Shias that they call the Akbaris and the Usulis. The Usulis have become the dominant sect within Shiism. 
and those sulis only became dominant in the last hundred years. Before the usulis were dominant, there was the Akbaris, and the Akbaris were literalists. And so they were overcome, alhamdulillah. Maybe that's why the Islamic revolution had space to take place because this, the, 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 the literalists were defeated. Now we just need to defeat the literalists maybe in the Sunni world also. But the words here of Allah says, seeking to create discord. If you are trying to make the figurative passages literal, then that creates discord and chaos. Because now you are going to argue that, you know, Allah is this, Allah is that, Allah is a legs, Allah is a shin, um, you know, and uh, basically that is, that is a problem. It, it contradicts other existing understandings of what Allah is. Allah is not a shape or a form. Allah doesn't need the human form. No one knows their meaning except Allah. Instead, those endowed with knowledge say, we affirm the truthfulness of the deity as from our Lord and sustainer. So we accept the Quran as it is in its entirety. Sometimes when there are figurative passages, we are not arrogant to say this is the meaning. We, we express a humble feeling of maybe this is what it means. Right? Now here comes a very powerful bomb. <laughs> a bomb is dropped here in the last words of that verse. And the Arabic says, Maya zakaru illa ulul albab. That is the Arabic. Right? It's not a mistranslation, it's a correct translation. Wama ya zakaru illa ulul albab. Meaning is Yes, higher consciousness is not attainable except by possessors of intellect. It's a powerful verse, a powerful phrase, because what it says is that, number one, there is a thing called yadhakar, to reach a level of higher consciousness, you know. If, 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 you, if you become conscious of Allah, you become conscious of Allah's power. You become conscious of your purpose. You become conscious of your duties. Then you have reached higher consciousness. That is what the verse is. But you will only achieve that level of higher consciousness if you are a, a possessor of intellect. If you possess and if you create or possess, you make sure you possess intellect. Intellect is a healthy, sound, rational pattern of thinking and reasoning, which is not the same as following another person blindly. No. Why, why would Allah need human beings if we're following other human beings blindly? Then Allah could have created 10 malaikas and make everyone else just blind followers. We are each Bani Adam. Each of us can be a possessor of intellect. And we can each reach what is called this higher consciousness. Some people in other religions, they call it Nirvana. Some people call it um, Fana, the Sufis. It is the state of comfort in your mind, the state of knowing, the state of understanding. So, go to the next ayat, we've got three more. Okay. Let's uh, continue with the last few verses. Then Allah says further on, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِيْقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابِ Very famous du'a. Lord and sustain of us, let not our minds go astray after you have shown us the way. 
bestow on us of your good fortune, for indeed you are the great giver. Rabbana innaka jami'un nasi liyawmi la rayba feeh. Inna Allah la yukhliful li'ad. Lord and sustain of us, you will indeed assemble humanity on that day of which there is no doubt. Certainly, Allah does not break his promise. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَن تُغْنِيَ عَنْهُمْ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُوَقُّدُ النَّارِ As to those who reject their wealth and their many sons will not offer them escape from Allah. As for them, they will become the fuel of hell. كَدَأْبِ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا فَأَخَذَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ شَدِيدُ وَيْقَابِ As was the recurring practice of the people of Pharaoh and those after them, they repudiated our directives, and so Allah helped them to account for their transgressions. Allah is strict in imposing consequences. قُلِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَزَّتُغْلَبُونَ وَتُخْشَرُونَ إِلَى جَهَنَّمْ وَبِئَسَ الْمِهَادِ Tell those who stand in denial, you will be defeated and you will be driven to hell. A terrible fate. قَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ آيَاتٌ فِي فِئَتَيْنِ الْتَفَتَى فِئَةٌ تُقَاتِلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَأُخْرَى there lies for you a lesson in the two parties that met in combat. This is the Battle of Badr. Eh? One party fought in the cause of Allah, while the other who were denialists, perceived them as twice the actual numbers when viewed. For Allah assists with his support whom he chooses. In this, there is an example for those who possess insight. Ulil Abasar, those who possess insight. Zainul Nazi Hub, this is the last two verses. Zainul Nazi Hub Shahawati Minasa Minan Nisa Iwal Bani Nawal Fana Kanatiri Mukantaratin Minal Zahapi Wal Fidati Wal Khail Al Musawamati Wa An Ami Wal Harth Zali Kamata Ul Hayati Dunya Wallahu Ainda Husnul Mab. It is an urge to fulfill desires that make people crave women, sons, stocked up gold and silver, fine horses, cattle and land. These are the pleasures of the earthly life. In closeness to Allah, however, lies the finest fulfillment. I will stop thee. I will stop thee. <clears throat> Allah says in this verse, in this verse, it is an urge to fulfill desires that make people crave women, sons, stocked up gold and silver. The Arabic is it, it, it means vessels overflowing with gold and silver. Fine horses fine horses, cattle and land. These are the pleasures of the earthly life. In closeness to Allah ever lies the finest fulfillment. fulfillment. Note that in this verse, we are not told that these things are evil or haram or you mustn't crave these things. It is just a commentary. Allah is just giving a commentary on these things. So no, there's nobody that there's no there's no rule that says you cannot 
aspired to wealth or to have many, <laughs> many wives or, um, or uh, what's the other thing, yeah? land, fine horses. I think I will need that as fine cars. We like nice cars. We like nice possessions. And Allah doesn't deny it. Allah just is making a comment that we have that urge. But then Allah wants to add a corollary to that. So if before you think that these things are the be and end all, before you make that assumption, which will drive you crazy if you do only believe in those beautiful possessions, know that even if you don't have all of that, real happy, happiness, real contentment, real fulfillment in the end does not lie on those things. So even if you get it, and you have to get it to realize it, that real contentment does not lie in having Ferrari and the Land Rover latest model and the three women models or married to three way models or having hundreds of people working for you because the word sons here it refers to power men under your command so you own companies you have 10,000 people working in your companies you have beautiful women you have a bank balance that is over the top you have land Allah says yes even if you had all those things it will not give you the fulfillment that you will have if you connect deeply in your heart of hearts with Allah, you know? And there's another verse, there's a hadith of the prophets, you know? I do quote hadiths because hadiths, sometimes there's wisdom in hadith, where something to the effect where the prophet says that I take pride in my simplicity. That's a powerful few words. I take pride in my simplicity. How powerful is that? So the fact that the Prophet ﷺ could own, because at the end of his life, he was a master of Arabia, conquered all the cities and towns. If he wished, he could be a king. He could live in utter luxury. But he didn't. He didn't. Because his contentment was not in owning. He did have a nice horse. I'll tell you now, the prophet did have a nice horse. The prophet did have a nice sword also. He had nice clothes also. In one book I read that the prophet used to wear different outfits for different days of the week. And on a Monday, I think he wore his Roman toga because the prophet lived in Roman times when the Romans ruled and uh, the Romans ruled very near to where Arabia was. In fact, part of Arabia was under Roman control. And so many Arabs would travel. In fact, when the prophet went on journeys, he used to meet Romans. He used to probably, you know, I don't think there were gladiators in that time, but there were Romans. And he used to wear on a Tuesday, I believe, his Roman outfit. These are things that I don't think you will learn because people want to put a... So the prophet had beautiful things. He had a beautiful horse. He had some nice clothes. He had beautiful women, maybe, you know. The thing is, he wasn't... He, he didn't live for those things. He lived for Allah. The reason he had it also, I, I believe, honestly, that, you know, Allah did not give us a hermit sitting on top of a mountain in... Uh, in uh, rags because then it would make us almost like difficult it would make it would make the example of the prophet a too strict of an example and so allah made the prophet a man of like other men you know women marriage a little bit of nice things beautiful horse beautiful sword and shield and so we are the people as they say the ummah hmm? We are the people who follow the balanced path. 